All right, thanks for joining us today for this quick look at Giganta Prime, number 37B from the Wonder Woman 80 set. Uh, she is going to be on a lot of competitive teams, and I'm going to break down what she does and then look at the, uh, the core of the team build that people are using her on and how that operates. All right, let's take a quick look at her. So she comes in with the Injustice League, Legion of Doom, Secret Six, and Scientist Keywords. She is a prime. She has two traits. First one is when establishing theme teams, you may choose a friendly character named Wonder Woman. If you do, Giganta gains that character's keywords. So you can theme her into a Wonder Woman team. She has, now this is her giant retaliation trait, uh, which is the key part of this strategy of the team. And even if you don't use her in this strategy, there's a couple cool things to point out here. So let's go over it first. She has power. Choose an opposing character that attacked a friendly character or that was attacked by a friendly character named Wonder Woman since your last turn. Place Giganta such that she can make a close attack targeting the chosen character, then do so. Okay, let's break that down first and then we'll look to see how it combines with her special attack power. So one thing to notice here on this retaliation, each retaliation character is slightly different so this is a good one it's a power action uh, lots of them are free but this power action it doesn't look for if they if any other character was placed this turn so if you have her with another retaliator that does require that you haven't placed anybody you could retaliate with the other retaliator first and then retaliate with giganta also the other thing is this one uh, and this is what makes it great is it doesn't look for uh it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to retaliate if you've been attacked but that you can retaliate against a character that was attacked by a friendly character named wonder woman since your last turn so since your last turn what happens is your opponent takes a turn then you take a turn so on your turn Wonder Woman can attack, and then Giganta can retaliate against that same target. And that's the key here that makes her so great. In addition to the combination of the next two um, powers that she has going on. So she has a special attack power, which is Quake. When she uses it to target two or more characters, she deals her printed damage value to each hit character. And after resolutions, give, gives each hit character an action token. So printed damage plus an action token when she uses Quake. Uh, that's going to be key here on her top click. We'll look at the back of her card in a second. Top click, she's dealing four damage. Uh, lower point value, she's dealing three damage plus giving out the action tokens. And the combination uh, that is used on the competitive team is you team her up with uh, a Wonder Woman or two that use the uh, Lasso of Truth, which also gives in-cap is free. So you're going to have multiple chances to not only uh, have a far reach and damage multiple opponents depending on their formation, but then multiple chances to token them up so that it makes it tough for them to then counter attack. Her special defense gives her some durability. She has invulnerability and then she only takes a maximum of one damage from characters with anything other than giant symbol. So tiny standard and colossals only one damage so that should uh, protect her and keep her around a little bit longer okay let's take a quick look at the back of the card she is coming in with the wonder woman team ability and the team player if you see here she has 75 or 25 as the point values uh, the competitive build i'm seeing mostly used at the 75 to get that maximum amount of damage which is four uh, she's going to be coming in with charge and then she has the special quake and that special defense so an 11 attack for four damage to multiple characters is solid even at her lower point value uh, 10 attack with three damage and that outwit that's in there too all right let's take a look at the team build that she's used on and then we'll break down some of the other parts here uh, before we do that, let's take a quick look at what Giant Reach does in case you uh, don't know. Giant Reach in great size so you can see who she can reach with those 
uh, quakes. All right, so first, let's take a look here. Giant Reach. She's going to have Giant Reach 2, since she is a giant and not a colossal. And when this character makes a close attack, instead of choosing an adjacent character or characters if able, for targets, you may use Improve Target and Hindering and target characters within X squares and line of fire. Uh, so she can uh, target stealth characters that are in hindrance because she has the improved targeted, and then she can see everybody within two. The great size allows her to have these additional lines of fire uh, that open up. So great size says lines of fire drawn to or from this character are not blocked by elevated terrain, outdoor blocking terrain, and are hindered only if the line of fire is drawn to a square of hindering terrain that includes the target. Okay, and then, uh, remember, Great Size now gives willpower that succeeds on a roll of 3 through 6. That means that she can have a 3 through 6 to take a token off herself. With that special defense power, uh, hopefully she'll be able to survive until the after she retaliates until the next one of your turns. She has some chances to pull a token off of her if she's double tokened up and keep attacking. Uh, keep attacking with that quake, hopefully, and deal out multiple damage to multiple characters. Okay, one other thing to see here on the general effects of size, line of fire. Smaller characters do not block line of fire. So you can see through the great size line of fire improvements, and you also are not blocked by smaller characters. So you can see a lot of your opponents. Okay, let's take a look at the build. All right, let's look at the core build of this uh, competitive team. Uh, what you would have here, I'm just showing one flash. It would really be two flash that you would need uh, to get this build going. Of course, you can swap this out, and I'll show you uh, some alternatives. You need a the Shift and Focus, Wonder Woman, the Lasso of Truth, and Giganta. Okay, this type of build, the two flashes would be costing uh, 50 points altogether. Wonder Woman 75, and uh, if you play, Gi play Giganta on the top click, that on the full point value, she'll be 75 also. So you're looking at 200 points altogether. Lasso of Truth wouldn't cost anything because it starts the game equipped to Wonder Woman. Uh, if you choose, they can start with any Wonder Woman equipment equipped. Lasso of Truth is the one that works with this team. Okay, so what Flash is bringing to the team, uh, you need two of them so that you can... Put the second one on there uh, where you choose which one of these clicks. Your first one's going to be on that. Then your second flash will be here where you're getting TK. And then after placement, you can move them an additional two. So kind of like uh, Mr. Oz, except this one is going to be modern longer. So it's this power here which is TK, when the Flash uses it to place a character after resolutions, you may place that character within two squares and line of fire of their current square. What the Lasso Truth does is it is going to give you in-cap with a range of four as free. And that's the piece that matters. The in-cap is free. Uh, anything where you can do any kind of attack for free is great. Uh, this one, that means then that you can move, do other th stuff, and then ink cap is free. The reason that that's key is you'll remember Giganta triggers off of Wonder Woman making an attack. Ink cap is free is an attack. So you can move Wonder Woman her full uh, speed value. Ink cap is free. Uh, switch them out. Ink cap is free again. And then Giganta can retal on that same turn. Okay, the Wonder Woman that you have here, usually on this build, you'd want to start with the um, common Wonder Woman. So this is her trait where they start with the Wonder Woman uh, equipment equipped. Now the key here is the shift and focus part, so let's take a quick look there. Free, if Wonder Woman began your turn on the map, replace her with another character with this trait. And now this next part is uh, important. When Wonder Woman uses shift and focus, Wonder Woman... Uh, while equipped with a Wonder Woman equipment, remove that object from the game, don't score it, instead of unequipping it. So if she has the lasso attached, when she shifts out, the lasso is removed from the game, so now it's outside the game. When the next Wonder Woman comes in, 
she can start, she has the same thing going on up here. She can start with any Wonder Woman equipped. Uh, so with any Wonder Woman equipment equipped. So then when she pops back in, the lasso can go on the next one. Uh, the good, good one to use here is the uh, number 41, the rare, because of, she has the same thing going on at the top too, but then this special damage power is opposing characters within range, modify defense minus one for each action they have. So what you would do is you start with common Wonder Woman. Uh, I'll show you how far they can get in positioning, but she'll get up there where she can free in cap with the lasso against your opponent. So that's one chance to token up opponents. Oh yeah. And the other thing on the lasso is right here is when the equipped character uses it, if they have Wonder Woman team ability, each opposing character adjacent to the original targets also become targets. So if your opponents are still all next to each other when you use that in cap, you're going to be targeting multiple characters trying to give them action tokens. All right, so how that works is she can move up. She gets her chance with the in cap. She has a four range when using that lasso. So she can in cap targeting the people next to the original target since she has the Wonder Woman team ability. She shifts out, which means the lasso is then removed from the game. She shifts into the rare Wonder Woman, who can start the game equipped with the lasso. She can take her free to in-cap again. Uh, so you have two chances there to token up your opponents. Now, if any of those, if both of them happened, then you have some characters that have two tokens, which means they'll be picking up a minus two to defense. And if you only hit once, then a minus one to defense. Then Giganta can retow since the uh, Wonder Woman made an attack, then she can be placed quaking everybody she can see. If she's on top click, that will be an 11, and those defenses might be modified down one or two uh, for four damage to everybody that she is quaking into. If you play her on the lower points, it will be a 10. Uh, that would be okay, especially if you pick up the minus defenses, the minus modifiers from rare Wonder Woman, and then she'll be hidden for three if you have her on the lower points. All right, let's take a look at how far that reaches then on this uh, this type of team build. Again, you'll have to assume that there's two flash in there since I only have one for demo. Uh, our team is in the starting area. The opponents are in their starting area. Okay, now of course there would be first turn immunity, but there's your opponents all the way over there. So just for demonstration of how far you can reach should your opponents stay in their starting area on turn one then it becomes your turn, or if you one map, if they still stay there. So we're assuming that we're on the second turn. Okay, Flash can TK, which is a six. So that would be one uh, that both squares can see. So anywhere out here is going to be okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to TK Wonder Woman here. Flash's special TK can then move her two more within line of fire. So she can see that square. She's going to have a... 10 movement, so she's going to travel across this map. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way over to here. She would have the lasso, which gives her a range of 4 with in cap as free. So now she could do her free in cap. That would target 1, 2, 3. She could get to the back row. So you can get all the way across the map uh, with one turn. On this one, this formation, she would target Apollo. All these other characters then would become targets also, kind of like Energy Explosion, but with in-cap. Uh, she would do that. She would then shift out. The lasso would go out of the game. She would shift into the next Wonder Woman, who could do the same thing. Target in here, second chance for the in-cap. Then you can retile with Giganta, who is still all the way over here. You would place her where she can make a close attack to the characters that were targeted uh, by Wonder Woman. So the other thing I didn't point out is that is uh, another key piece here on the card. Here we go. Okay, so on this one, choose an opposing character that attacked a friendly character or that was attacked by a friendly character named Wonder Woman. There's nothing there that says that Wonder Woman had to hit, just that she has to attack. Uh, so it doesn't matter if you hit them or not. Just the fact that she's taking that free in cap is the attack. And 
than gigantic and retail. The cool thing is with the in cap where it, uh, you can target the characters next to, she's attacking all of those characters. So that gives you some options on where you want to place Giganta. And uh, this one, we're going all the way across the board where they're kind of backed up to the edge of the map anyway. Uh, but if they were out in the middle, you could place behind whatever works to your advantage, especially keeping in mind the follow-up attacks that you might want Wonder Woman or the rest of your team to do. Okay, Giganta then can be placed. Uh, she has Giant Reach 2. If you place her here, the characters do not block line of fire, so she would be retailing with Quake against everyone since within two, she can see all these squares. If you were to place her over here, same thing, she can see one, two, so she can see all the figures. Okay, And it just depends on how you want to do your placement. You could even place her into this square where she could still Quake into everybody. Uh, thinking about where your knockbacks would be if she does hit because that could set up additional attacks afterwards. Now before we look at the next part, let's take a quick look at what Quake does just in case you're unsure or unfamiliar. Uh, Quake has knockback as uh, just as having the ability to use Quake, knockback is there. Okay, And then it also has when this character makes a close attack, they may target all adjacent opposing characters. If one or more characters were targeted, each hit character is dealt two damage instead of normal damage. So the way that interacts with Giganta Prime is Giganta Prime, when she retails, she can make a close attack. So then she has Quake as her embedded in her special attack power. So when she makes that close attack retail, Quake kicks in, giving her knockback and the ability to target all um all adjacent opposing characters okay and then her giant reach and great size come into play when she makes close attacks she considers the characters within two that she can see adjacent for the attack so that's how you get the multiple targets from a quake with a giant the uh, other thing there is notice that she does have the knockback and then also remember that her special defense gets past that two damage limitation when she targets one or more so she'll be dealing her printed damage okay now let's take a look at this setup okay let's take a look at one more setup example here uh, so on this type of setup we're on an indoor map but there's these multiple elevation changes so right here where uh, let's actually move we'll move him down to the lower elevation just to give you some more <clears throat> ideas of how this can happen so this is all the opponent's team over on this side okay and then you have wonder woman over here who came up and did the same example that we demonstrated shifted out uh, attacking apollo now that wouldn't have splashed onto anybody else or targeted any other adjacent characters just targeting apollo okay on this kind of setup we have one opponent that's on elevation two we have apollo on three we have uh, gorilla on four and we have Maxi Zeus on Elevation 5. So they've spread themselves out thinking that they might be safe. But we have a giant Colossal Retaliator that will be placed so that she can attack the character Wonder Woman attacked, which is Apollo. So your placement with that giant reach, you could go right here. If you place Giganta here, she's going to have Line of Fire to Apollo with giant reach 2. The Elevation is uh doesn't come into play because she has improved targeting or she doesn't have improved targeting she has giant reach which is even better because if somebody has some shenanigans where they can take away your improved ability doesn't matter on uh, great size because that is not truly an improved targeting ability it is just a benefit of the great size so it just great size further clarifies what lines of fire can and can't do with uh, giants and colossals so she can uh, elevation does not block line of fire for giants or colossals so that two square reach she can see here she can see here she can see here so she could quake and retail against this character on two apollo on three the gorilla on four maxi zeus on five and she can quake them all all right hopefully that gives you some examples of why this type of team build 
is super tough to go against and pretty darn effective to get a far reach and multi-target and tokens. Uh, it can really shut down your uh, opponent's team as you're dealing out a bunch of damage to multiple characters. So uh, super strong build. The uh, When you go against it, so I had to play against a similar type of build last week. You're just hoping that Gigantum misses. Your formation, you kind of have to keep them spread out, and it's tough to do. It can really throw off your strategy. Now, if she does miss, then that's going to be key. And if you did not get completely tokened up. So if you still have some some maneuverability or you throw out some bait and then leave some of your main attackers if your opponent takes that bait you really need to get rid of this prime character now the reason as you remember that that is going to be super difficult is she only takes one damage uh, because of her special defense power okay the uh the good thing is you could um outwit that power and then go to work on getting this character off the board if they're playing her at 75 points that's going to be six clicks that you have to get through uh, not too tough if you do outwit it and then spend some uh, attacks invested into getting her out of there you can uh, but then you got to worry about what your opponent's doing okay on the team build side of it when you do that team build, remember, I only demonstrated 200 points of that build, which gives you 100 points to build it out uh, with whatever other figure or figures that you want. And there's some interesting things that you can do there. All right, let me know in the comments below how you would finish out that build and what you think of this type of strategy. And thanks for watching. Check it out. If you dig what we do, go ahead and like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.